What's up guys, video information here. So this is going to be installment number eight for the series stock market news updates. And this is going to be Tuesday, October 1st, 2019 update. Play this music. And the five companies we have is Microsoft, JP Morgan, Activision, Rev Group, and Hyrie Car. Now, if you don't know the first or the last two, then I'm going to be doing a small bio on each. So don't worry about it. You're going to know both of those companies by the end of the video. First up, Microsoft, bringing together deep bioscience and AI to help patients worldwide. Novartis and Microsoft work to reinvent treatment, discovery, and development. In the world of commercial research and science, there's probably no undertaking more daunting or more expensive than the process of bringing a new medicine to market. For a new compound to make it from initial discovery through development, testing, and clinical trials to finally earn regulatory approval can take a decade or more. Nine out of 10 promising drug candidates fail somewhere al along the way. As a result, on average, it costs life sciences companies $2.6 billion to introduce a single new prescription drug. This is much more than just a challenge for life science companies. Streamlining drug development is an urgent issue for human health more broadly. From uncovering new ways to treat age-old sicknesses like malaria that kills hundreds of thousands of people every year to finding new cancer treatments or developing new vaccines to prevent highly contagious diseases from turning into global pandemics. The impact in terms of lives saved worldwide would be enormous if we could make inventing new medicines faster. As announced today, this is why Novartis and Microsoft are collaborating to explore how to take advantage of advanced Microsoft AI technology combined with Novartis Deep Life Sciences expertise to find new ways to address the challenges underlining every phase of drug development, including research, clinical trials, manufacturing, operations, and finance. In a recent interview, Novartis CEO Vaz Narasimhan, sorry, I tried, I know that I didn't pronounce him right, spoke about the potential for this alliance to unlock the power of AI to help Novartis accelerate research into new treatments for many of the thousands of diseases for which there is as yet no known cure. So that's article number one. Moving on to our next company, we have JP Morgan and also Intel and Trust Token, but I just, you know, titled it JP for the video. So anyways, the global currency organization GCO is launching a new US dollar backed stablecoin dubbed the USD Digital, USDD, there goes that awesome picture, Cointelegraph. So the new product was announced in an October 1st news release shared with Cointelegraph, GCO, a new project led by former employees of JP, Intel, and Trust Token, like we said, said that it plans to make the stablecoin model available to a worldwide network of partners to focus on the possibility for end users to move between cryptocurrencies and fiat. The San Francisco-based team said they decided to launch the organization to focus on bridging the gap between traditional and decentralized finance, said CEO of GCO. Moving on to our next article, we have a pretty short one It's Activision, but they've released their mobile Call of Duty, which Tessin helped them do. This is why this part's interesting. Call of Duty is firing a salvo at Fortnite with a new mobile video game that includes a battle royale mode for up to 100 players. So not too much more to really get into it, but just ask yourself, why would Tessin, the one that has a partial stake in Fortnite, bring over Activision, a competitor, that really just do that? Okay. Well, I got to hit the backspace. Sorry, guys. These ads always are in my face. Anyways, that's because of that ad that you guys saw. I accidentally clicked on it. But why would they do that, right? So the reason that Tessin did that is because right down here, the Chinese tech giant has a 5% stake in Activision Blizzard. So that's very interesting to consider because they're probably going to get some of that revenue and stuff like that simply because of the thriving... Um, of, of, of the mobile Call of Duty thriving, sorry. So Activision Blizzard's shares going up, they're going to profit off of it because they have a stake in it. So to me, Tessent is simply doing this to help one company thrive and them get more revenue. Makes perfect sense to me. Anyways, though, I feel like I over explained that. So let's move on to the next article. At first, I tried to say that they were going to get revenue, but I don't think they have enough of a stake to get revenue from the game. I think it's more just revenue off of or income off of whatever they make off of the share price. Anyways, though, why Rev Group could be positioned for a slump. 
Now, before we even talk about that, Rev G or Rev Group, go up real quick, is a holding company which engages in the manufacture, distribution, and design of specialty vehicles and related aftermarket parts and services. It operates through the following segments, fire and emergency commercial recreation and corporate and other. The fire and emergency segment offers fire apparatus, ambulance products. The commercial segment involves in transit and shuttle buses, so on, so forth. You can pause in and read the rest if you like. But the CEO is Timothy Sullivan, founded in 2010 in Wisconsin, Milwaukee, 7,600 employees. Let's get into this article. Annex out that one. All right. So similar to wise buying decisions, exiting certain underperformers at the right time helps maximize portfolio returns. Selling off losers can be difficult, but if both the share price and estimates are falling, it could be time to get rid of the security before more losses hit your portfolio. One such stock that you may consider dropping is RevG, which has witnessed a significant price decline in the, in the past four weeks and has been seen and has seen negative earnings estimate revisions for the current quarter and the current year. It currently has a Zach's ranked sell. A key reason for this move has been the negative trend in earnings estimate revisions for the full year. We have seen three estimates moving downward in the past 30 days compared with no upward revisions. This trend has caused the consensus estimate to trend lower, going from $1.14 EPS per share a month ago to its current level of $0.54. Cents. So uh, again, it's talking about EPS, not the actual share price. Right now, the share price is ten ninety seven, but its EPS is just dropping, meaning its earnings per share, how much it's profiting for every share an investor has in there is lowering. That's not good. Also, for the current quarter, Rev Group has seen three downward estimate revisions um, versus no revision in the opposite direction. That's kind of what they already said. Dragging the consensus estimate down to $0.25 cents a share from $0.55 cents over the past 30 days. Just looking god awful. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. But it goes to then recommend High Recar. If you are still interested in the transportation services industry, you may instead consider a better ranked stock, High Recar. Now, let's take a look at Hiri Car. So, X out this one. And we have Hiri. Take a look at that bio. Hiri Car engages in the operation of a pair to pair car sharing marketplace. Its services allow car owners to rent their ideal cars to ride sharing service drivers. The company was founded in July 2014 and is headquartered in Los Angeles, CA. The CEO is Joseph Fornarni. They only have 87 employees. So this is a very small company, market cap of 40 million. Very small company, guys. So the dark side of high recar. You just saw the last article right at the end. It was saying, oh, yeah, it's a great investment. You guys should consider it. This one's talking about the dark side, though. So Hyrie Car still has an amazing business model. Don't get them wrong. However, quarter two 2019 results are quite disappointing on the driver's side, despite management claiming there is significant demand, where we're going to find out what he means by that. Management has not responded to our queries and do not address the slowing growth anywhere. Also, Uber and Lyft are partnering with other rental companies. Not looking good for Hyrie Car. Hyrie Car is one of, the, of these companies where we shoot before we aim. At first glance, everything seems fine. But as we look deeper, there are some red flags that are quite concerning. We are still holding onto our shares, but in light of these red flags, along with the fact that management hasn't responded to our email, we are reluctant to add more shares, even at lower prices. To recap what we liked, the one thing that attracted us to Hyrie Car was the promise of massive demand from the consumer side. Management has claimed multiple times that driver demand far outstrips supply and backed this up with their 80,000 driver leads per quarter st statistic. Sorry. If this statement was true, it meant growth should be easy as all management had to do was to focus on the supply side to drive growth. Now there were other aspects that we liked, like the platform business model and the high insider ownership. But growth is the main reason we own Hyrie Car, which is the main reason you typically own smaller companies for its growth. The financial, however, don't reflect this demand. Gross billings were pretty much flat from quarter one to quarter two, which is alarming considering this is the first time gross billings growth, gross billings growth had slowed sequentially before this slowdown. Gross, 
gross billings were growing double digits quarter over quarter. So it is really alarming to see a slowdown of this magnitude. This is area, like this is where it starts to get more juicy though, guys. So the main reason why the slowdown is so odd is that supply has increased substantially from quarter two, according to management's own words. The supply increase should lead to significant revenue growth. Makes sense to me. Building car capacity and scaling dealer relationships were the main themes of of our dealer initiative in quarter two. In our 2019 first quarter call, we noted 114 commercial accounts representing approximately 1,700 cars listed on the platform. I'm happy to report that today we have increased commercial account by 50% to 170, representing approximately 2,300 cars listed. While these cars represent future revenue growth, obviously there's still a major asymmetry between the driver's leads we're generating and the cars listed on our site. So they looked into Uber to compare and for ride sharing, we typically generate higher revenue in our fourth quarter compared to other quarters due in part to fourth quarter holiday and business demand and typically generate lower revenue in our third quarter compared to other quarters due in part to less usage of our platform during peak vacation season in certain cities such as paris we have typically experienced lower quarter over quarter growth in ride sharing in the first quarter however that doesn't explain the second quarter as you're about to see there is no explanation for a slowdown in business in the second quarter We've looked through Hyrie's 10Q and earnings call for explanations, but there was little explanation on why gross billings, on why gross billings growth, I hate the way they word that, had slowed. So there you go. You got a bounce rate of 50% pages per visit, about five uh, monthly visits, 329,000. Average visit duration, about four minutes. We've also looked at web traffic and there was a noticeable decline in April from March. Of course, this isn't enough evidence to be conclusive, but it could be a sign of some seasonality. There are other possible explanations for this. Perhaps Hyrie Car had slowed down marketing due to its low cash supply. If this were the case, though, then the capital raise at the end of quarter two should once again help drive growth. Management did mention after all that raise should... After all that, the raise should help supercharge all facets of the business. The proceeds from this raise allow us to supercharge all facts, all facets, I don't like that word, of the business with a focus on technology. So we are enhancing the dealer portal, including building out a standardized driver earn to own program, which was a specific ask from one of our OEM partners. Now, I always forget what OEM stands for. If you guys don't remember either, What it means is original equipment manufacturer, which is a somewhat misleading term, and it is used to describe a company that that has a special relationship with compute and IT producers because OEMs are typically manufacturers who resell another company's product under their own name and branding. So it's not an original equipment manufacturer. It's like a copycat when you think about it. Anyways, though. To finish this off, as well as accelerating backend infrastructure development by adding senior engineering talent. And that is it for the video, guys. If you enjoyed it, make sure to throw a like and make sure to subscribe. As always, I really appreciate it. I hope you all have a great rest of your night and a great day tomorrow. Feed you information, out.